Uh, Russia has power, absolutely, and uh, that is uh, exactly why dictatorship and authoritarian rules are so much interested in words and, and lim uh, limitations of freedom of speech. Um, someone once said that um, when a country becomes um, free or or is able to get rid of, of the uh, authoritarian rule, then the first thing you have to do is learn the new language as the dictatorships um, prefer to, uh, to influence the language of the people as well as, as they are using propaganda and, and therefore trying to um, affect the way people think about their rule and regime, so criticism is not allowed or it is uh, severely oppressed. Well, if, if, if a victim, I think a victim is, is uh, uh, should, yeah, perhaps even should, it's, it's, it's healthy to, to feel hate towards the, the whoever has done wrong to you. Uh, and uh, I think that's part of the healing process as well. Um, but um, the problem with the populistic uh, governments or parties is that they are, uh, they are giving easy solutions to people. And there are never easy solutions to problems. Um, it is easy to find uh, good and easy enemies. Uh, and it is easy to create hate towards those good enemies. Um, and uh, it is easy to say that they are the ones who are to blame for some problem, for, for the economical gap. Or, or the problems in the society or, or things like that. It is, e it is easier way to do that than actually correct the problem because the problems are usually very complicated to, to, to uh, correct. And uh, unfortunately, those people who prefer to believe in these statements and, and populistic parties, they kind of forget the history, as this has happened before as well, and the problems were not solved. <laughs> it's only more like uh, new problems uh, uh, were born. As we are, we are speaking at the moment at my Finnish publishing house, Like Publishing, and uh, when we talk about publishing, then actually we are talking about freedom of speech as well. And most of the publishing houses in the free world they are pretty free to do and publish whatever they whatever, whatever they want, um, which would be also a good opportunity to uh, publish those authors uh, who might not be published in their own home country, for instance. Uh, but unfortunately, publishers um, are a little bit afraid of. of, of risk-taking. Uh, publishing industry is one of those industries which in many countries don't get support from the government, for instance. That means that it's not like opera, for example, or it's not like ballet. They get tax money or then there's a fundraising and so on. But usually publishers don't get that kind of money. And, and that means that they have to listen to the audience. And, um, and the readers, the customers who buy the books, and um, that makes them sometimes a little bit um, um, uh, skeptical um, when, when we think about publishing books that come from the countries we know little about. For example, in Anglo-American country, only around 5% of the books, books uh, published there are actually translated, so that already uh, means that um, there's a very little, uh, or the selection of, of the books coming from the 
those not heard countries is is very small one. And of course, also media needs to listen to the customers, and they don't write about uh, books that they think they are it, they are not interesting for the audience. So, not enough clicks. Uh, we, we can say we can put it like that as well. One of the things I've learned um, while traveling for my translations uh, is that. Um, the situation we have here in Nordic countries is pretty unique. Um, in, I guess in all Nordic countries, um, when we think about all the authors, then over 50% of the authors are female. And that is actually a very uh, rare situation um, when we think about the whole world. And uh, when, when I was studying at the university, um, it was it was a time when I think quite many female authors also in Finland they thought that um, or they preferred not to be referred as female authors but only authors and as an idea that's that's a very good idea we all should only be authors um, and not uh, defined by gender um, but then um, Traveling for my translation changed my view on this um, because I understood th that uh, female authors in many countries are really struggling uh, uh, to get published, to get heard, uh, to be able to make their living through writing. And uh, there are all kinds of different, um, not restrictions, but, but problems that female authors meet uh, compared to the problems male authors uh, meet. Uh, so in, in that way, I think we should actually talk about female authorship uh, and to make those problems more visible. Uh, and um, when I think about, when, for example, interviews in different countries, then um, already uh, the questions I get uh, from a journalist might really reveal something about the um, equality situation in the country. Uh, for example, if uh, half of the questions uh, are about my husband or the, how my husband is reacting to my profession, then that already tells something about the equality situation in the country. I mean, those are the questions you wouldn't ever, ever get in, in Nordic countries. Well, um, I have lots of readers in countries where, um, where the government is, is problematic in, in many ways and freedom of speech is limited. And I have a feeling that actually literature in those countries matters more. Um, also, um, for different reasons, um, uh, people might need that window to the world, quite simply. Uh, it gives them the opportunity, even very entertaining literature in a way matters more because it gives them a break, quite simply. But also um, in, in books you can, you can deal with those issues that in those countries the government uh, is not very interested in, in, in um, talking about. Um, or that the legal system might be totally uh, unfair uh, for victims, or for example, in, in countries where, uh, where um, where there's a lot of corruption, for example, um, and which also affects the, the freedom of speech. So in, in that way, I have a feeling that in, in those countries, books actually matter more. Uh, when a person, even the very angry person, allows him or herself to see the world through somebody else's eyes, then it does make change, at least a little bit. Best wishes for Finnish Pen celebrating its 90th anniversary. Keep up the good work. Pikin äänen ihanuus ei muuttunut sen mukaan, mitä hän sillä teki. Halutessaan hän sai äänellään koukkuun kenet hyvänsä, naisen tai miehen, koiran tai kissan. 
Hän tyynnytti äänellään myrskyt ja itkevät lapset. Unettomat lepäsivät hänen äänessään ja ahdistuneet tunsivat rintansa aukeavan kevyiksi. Ihollisen hänen äänensä kuori suojattomaksi, mutta oli sadatteluissakin suloinen ja sokeuttava, pisteliäimilläänkin vangitseva. Hänen äänensä venyi ja kiemurteli ja vääntyi, kääntyi kenen hyvänsä ääneksi ja palautui siinä samassa omaksi kermaiseksi itsekseen. Kaikki sanat, joita jumalaisista äänistä on käytetty, olivat hänen äänensä kohdalla vääriä, sillä se ei muistuttanut kenenkään ääntä, ei tietyn henkilön tai laulajan, ei tuttuja radio- tai televisioääniä. Se ei ollut samettinen tai tumma tai käheä, vaikka se tuntuikin suloiselta kuin rintojen iho, sametin kutitus kaulalla tai lämmin käsipaidan alla, kuin se ääni joisi tummaa kaakauta ja söisi manteleita. Ja oli se käheäkin, mutta se oli käheä sillä tavalla, kuin kesäöinen metsä on käheä ja kuulas yhtä aikaa, kun puut ovat hämärässä ja taivas heleydessä. Sen kuunteleminen tuntui siltä, kuin laskisi päänsä tyynylle, joka on täytetty ruusun ja liljojen terälehdillä. Hänen äänensä kuulosti samalta, kuin kaardemumma tuoksui ja kaneli. Mustarastas jonka kurkku oli tehty kanelista ja kaartemummasta.